Hi, I'm Jackie and welcome to My Magical Home. I hope that you're ready for some Halloween motivation today because this is the very first of my Halloween specials. And we are going to be creating a cast, a faux cast iron bubbling cauldron for my indoor decor and I think you guys are going to absolutely love it and I cannot wait to share the fun with you. Now this is actually part of a collaboration with my dear friend Kate. She is not only just so kind, she's just an incredible person and such a creative individual as well. She is linked in the description down below and I hope that you'll check her out after you are done with today's video. We have both have Halloween DIYs for you that you don't want to miss out on. Now let's go ahead and let the fun begin. So this is a cauldron that I picked up from Walmart years ago on clearance, and it's had so many uses, but today I feel like it's finally finding its purpose as we turn it into a spooky cauldron. Now, I am going to start out by drilling two holes on the side of my cauldron so that eventually I can add a rope in, but I'm not going to be worrying about that today. Next up, we are going to sand down our cauldron, and I'm going to be using a fine grit paper, P220. And the most important thing I can say to you here is to not leave any nook and cranny unsanded on the outside. And that is because it is going to help all of our materials adhere to the cauldron. Um, things have a tendency to have a hard time sticking to plastic, especially some of the materials like hot glue and paint that we'll be using, and hopefully this will help that out. I also want to point out that if you wanted to do a really simple cauldron and just wanted to make your plastic cauldron look a little aged, this worked wonderfully for that. But I had a little bit more that I wanted to add. Up next, it's time to add our 3D embellishments. Now, I am going to be adding a couple Nordic runes to this, the ones for protection, prosperity, and joy, of course. Um, I've also got some crescent moons that we're going to be adding, as well as two snakes that are kind of going to intertwine a little bit like Celtic knotwork on the top. And um, I'm just going to come in with my hot glue gun and just slowly trace over all of these things a little bit at a time and just keep adding more and more until I feel like I have all the embellishments that I need. I am just terrible about mirroring images on a product. Um, let me know if that's something that you struggle with too. It took me quite some time to get this all drawn out. And it's not perfect, but that's okay. It's a Halloween decoration. Um, I think that this is going to be really fun. And if you're wondering, yes, you could paint over it as it is right now with just the hot glue. But the problem that you're going to find with that is that that hot glue is going to peel off as well as your paint. Cleo and I are so grateful that you are choosing to hang out with us today. Don't forget to hit that subscription button because we've got tons more Halloween fun coming your way as well as all the other holidays. And as you know, some great movie nights. I am just using my engraver tool to kind of clean up some of the things that I felt were a little messy. Um, this isn't necessary. I'm just a little bit of a perfectionist and I happen to have the tool on hand. I would prefer a Dremel, but I don't have one yet. So once you have all the embellishments that you feel like you want on your cauldron, it is time to add what I'm going to call the skin. Um, we're going to be using Mod Podge. I would prefer matte, but I had satin on hand, so that's what we were using today. And little pieces of tissue paper, like the kind that you find in presents. And I cut them up into smaller pieces because I felt like it was easier to maneuver. And you basically go over your space with the Mod Podge first add your piece of tissue paper, and then slowly and tediously go in with your paintbrush and add another layer of Mod Podge on top, kind of gently pressing it into each little nook and cranny until your entire cauldron is covered. Now I did add more than one layer, and as I said earlier, tedious is the word. This did take a long time, but I'm really hoping that by adding this little skin, that it's going to help to make sure that those hot glue images that I worked so hard on will stay for years to come.
Once all of your layers of that Mod Podge skin are dry, it is time to start painting. Now you do not want to do this if it is still wet and tacky at all because it'll start to give it like a weird stickiness to the texture and you don't want that. But as I said, mine is completely dry so I'm going to start out by adding this like brushed black for a base coat and then I'm going to kind of come in and add a darker like just matte black as well as a matte like light gray and I'm just gonna kind of add little bits here and there until I feel like it gives a little bit of texture to the cauldron as you can see Puka is here helping me and she is very curious as to what is going on with this process um but basically I tried to go and like get a little lighter in the center and darker towards crevices, I guess would be the best way to explain how I tried to add this base coat. I feel like by not having it one direct solid color, it gives it a little bit more of that realism that I'm going for. And once that was done, I came over with a brushed a bronze, I believe, and um, I just lightly dry brushed it over the edges of my lip of my cauldron and over all of these little embellishments that I added. Now, if you're not familiar with what dry brushing is, it is basically you do not wet the brush all the way. You just lightly tap it into the paint. You tap it off onto another piece of paper with your dry brush and you just lightly go over everything. And it doesn't give quite that solid feel and it kind of gives a little bit more of a wispiness to your, your paint. So that's what I wanted to do here because I didn't want it. This is an aged cauldron. I'm thinking that this has brewed thousands of potions and done all kinds of devious deeds, um, it wouldn't look like it just came out of a box. So I didn't want that paint to be perfect and that's why I chose dry brushing for that. I also made sure to get the little handles so that they would stand out as well. Um, let me know what you guys are thinking of this cauldron so far. I don't know if you can see, but by adding that tissue paper, not only did we give it a skin to help protect it, but we also added a little bit of texture. And if you've ever seen a cast iron pot, they are not perfectly smooth. They have texture and just all those little touches just help to add to the realism of your product. Once I was finished with the paint, it was time to follow up with a polyacrylic water-based sealant to help make sure that these colors last. So we've got that polyurethane drying on the cauldron and as soon as it is done we're going to bring it back inside and I'm going to add the bubbles and the lights. Now this is something I saw on Pinterest and I just knew that I absolutely wanted to try it out. I hope that you guys like the way that it turned out and I'd love to hear your opinion on how the faux cast iron like look and the embellishments went. Um, I really feel like it kind of took that Walmart you know cauldron and gave it a little bit more of a a flare so I'd love to hear your opinion and don't forget to comment and say hi down below this part of the craft is just so simple but at the same time it kind of gave me a lot of trouble um, I went ahead and started off by putting that foam that you use for flowers into the base and just kind of filled up as much as I could of the cauldron and then I came over with some black creepy cloth that you can find at your local Dollar Tree or Walmart and then I have these like iridescent bulbs that I had gotten for the holidays years ago when I was doing a Harry Potter vibe and I have decided after seeing a couple things on Pinterest that I was going to sacrifice them to try out this little experiment. Now you just basically put in the bulbs into the cauldron, add fairy lights, and then you're done. Um, it was a little bit more difficult than I expected. I did end up using some hot glue to attach some of the bulbs together. I might even come back after this and reinforce them a little bit more. Um, I did find that actually putting the lights on before I added the bulbs was really, really helpful to this process. Um, when I had seen it done online, they were adding the, bul the lights afterwards, and I felt like it was just making all of my bulbs fall out, and it was just a giant chaotic mess. But when it was finished, I thought that this was perfect. I want to hear your opinion. Please comment down below.
hopefully enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. And I cannot wait to show you guys what exactly I'm actually doing with this cauldron for my decor this year. This is actually just an accessory in a much larger piece. So I cannot wait to share all the fun. If you haven't already hit that subscribe button, you don't want to miss out because this is just one of the amazing things that I'm going to be making with you this year. So don't forget to check out Kate. Her link is in the description and I will see you next time, my friends. Have a magical day. Bye.